All right, guys. So today we're going to talk about alternative or the best locks out there that are not a frame lock. Now, as I was one of the first people to point out, frame locks are vastly becoming not so popular in the knife scene. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of high quality, nice frame lock knives out there like this Hinder XM18 that are super smooth, just absolutely glassy deployment and just a nice knife overall. The frame lock system as a lockup is becoming less and less popular for a few reasons. Now we're not going to dig too much into this frame lock, but rather I wanted to talk about some of the alternatives that exist out there in the world that are superior to these frame locks. And like I said, I am pretty happy to see in all seriousness that there are becoming more high end offerings of knives that are once again, nice quality, nice blades that are not frame locks. It feels like for such a long time, if you wanted to buy an expensive, nice, high quality knife that came with good materials, it basically had to be a frame lock, but that is vastly changing. So let's jump right into it. So first off, let's talk about the compression lock. Now, the compression lock has a few different flavors. There are things like the Spider Co. Smock, as you guys see here, or there are more traditional offerings, which we'll talk about in just a second. Either way you slice it, this is probably one of my favorite locks is not a frame lock because it borrows so heavily on a lot of the innovation and the kind of overall features or like how a frame lock slash liner lock works but not actually being either of those itself so really cool they make for super easy one-handed deployment both if i can open this guy effectively uh, both one hand opening and closing very easily things like the spider coast smock are a little bit different because unlike a traditional um compression lock where the back of the compression lock is open and exposed the smocks version of the compression lock is actually fully concealed and actually comes in from the opposite direction either way though like i was saying they're both one hand users and completely just fine so this is the compression lock um, that the smock has like i said it's a little bit more advanced and hidden whereas on something like the paramilitary 2 you have that exposed tab right there some people even add uh like little raised portions of G10 to make it easier to deactivate but either way very smooth blades and very fun easy to use and I think that is one of the biggest things that I like about many of these offerings as I've talked about in other videos most of these different offerings are very um, intuitive and pretty darn safe to use from a kind of untrained background. All right, next one up is going to be the Axis Lock. And for the Axis Lock, I have a Benchmade 557. This one's a little bit of a rare bird. I feel like 557s and 553s, which are the Tanto variations of the Griptilian, are never really shown uh, on the YouTubes especially. This one still needs to be broken in a little bit, but um, this is, like I said, a 557, so it's a mini grip with the Tonto. Anyways, so this is the Axis Lock, of course. Benchmade was the one that pioneered the Axis Lock. There are different makers making crossbar, cross lock, Axis Lock variations or clones. I have things like the Hogue Deca that are just variations of this as well. So either way you slice it, um, the Axis lock, crossbar lock, whatever you want to call it, is a really intuitive, very easy to use, one-handed opening and closing blade. So I really like it, and uh, I think that it is worthy of being number two on the list. All right, next one up is going to be push buttons. Now this one unfortunately is a pure auto, but there are, and I'm happy to see that there are becoming more and more push button manual knives out there. Things like the Protec Pro Malibu and Mordax are good examples of manual or non-assisted or non-spring driven, non-automatic uh, versions of the push button. However, push buttons have been primarily known in the industry as automatics. So most people see a you know push button and they expect it to be an automatic. However, like I said, things like the Mordax and Malibu are really good flipper knives that are also um, push button. And push buttons have basically a lot of the same 
different characteristics as the last two mentioned, um, whether they are automatic or not. Now granted, if it is an automatic, in my opinion, as you guys can see here, it's still very easy to one hand open and close. Um, some autos are a little bit harder to one hand close than others, but things like this ProTech SNG, just fine. However, the one handed um, manual, or sorry, the push button, the push button manual um, knives like the Mordax are going to be very easy to use uh, as well, or close one handed, I should say. All right, so the next one up is the ball lock or ball bearing lock. Now, these are primarily featured on Spyderco. The reason why I'm placing this one a little bit lower in the mentions is just because there's not a lot of knives out in the jungle that have this form of lock. Now, we are seeing a very, very, very similar version of this from Microtech in their MSI and their um, Stitch that use the RAM lock. And the RAM lock is, for all intents and purposes, the same exact version of this. It is Microtech's, you know, uh, proprietary system and it does function a little bit differently, but for all intents and purposes, it's the same, you use it the same exact way as this. It is not something like the Axis, which some people initially thought it was. It is definitely more like the ball bearing lock. So anyways, once again, very intuitive, very easy to use, very easy to open and close one-handed, as you guys can see um, by me just flicking this thing around, but it is definitely a really solid contender. And once again, I, I have to throw this on the list because we see companies like um, Microtech with the MSI and the Stitch that are you know really taking this putting high quality blade materials handle materials really making you know something that's not a um, really making something that's not a frame lock or liner lock a very high quality knife. All right, next one up is one that has been out in the jungle for a little while, and that is the Shark Lock from Andrew Demko. Now, unfortunately, this is an Andrew Demko exclusive lock, so there's not any, there's, there's no other knife companies making this lock. However, the 80-20 and 20.5, as you guys see here, are available in a very vast myriad of different steels, handle variations, handle colors, and of course, the modifications you can get for these are out there and you can find a lot of different handle flavors and pretty much anything that you want to make an 80 20.5 or 20 work for you so there are a lot of aftermarket modifications you can get for these guys so that definitely helps out however once again the shark lock is a really cool very one hand friendly blade to open close deploy one thing i kind of dislike about this one and the reason why it's lower on the list is because it has a very weird detent it's not necessarily a weak detent but at the same time too it is fairly weak like it's definitely a lot weaker than something like a um compression lock where or maybe it's not so much weaker as much as it is it's kind of like mushy there's no like when the detent breaks on a you know paramilitary two for instance or even an axis like it's very it's very stiff then there's a lot of pressure that has to be overcome that's why you can flick these things open so easily whereas on the shark lock it's just kind of mushy like it's kind of hard to explain in a video without the tactile feel but trust me the shark lock is a little bit mushy however once you get past that learning curve it is really smooth and the actual like action is very very good on an 80-20 or 20.5 so anyways that is the shark lock all right, last one up is going to be the lockback. Now the shark lock and the lockback actually have a lot in common and the lockback's the last one up on this list because it's probably my least favorite. You usually have to use two hands unless you feel really confident and secure in dropping that blade towards you just because you have to actuate it like such. So this blade, this one's not a great example, but this blade can come back on you and cut you if it was a little bit smoother. So you do have to keep that in mind and it is, you know a bit of a con however lockbacks are good and there's plenty of higher end knives that have a really solid lockback not to mention lockbacks are also usually pretty darn sturdy the delica 4 in this case is no exception so 
Anyways, those are, in my opinion, some really nice locking systems out there that are not a frame lock. And I'm definitely happy to see the kind of culture or community starting to move away from the frame lock. Not because I think the frame lock is a horrible locking option, but just because there's honestly, like as you guys can see here, there's a lot of other really good options out there in the market, on in the community, on the market. And uh, yeah, so anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.